to have a corporate logo, it should be a lonely businessman crying as he wanks. Just the fact that you go in and on your bed there's just a towel and a tea bag and a Bible. MacGyver could not create joy from those three elements. And if you read the Travelodge Bible at the end of it, Jesus wouldn't even come back. He'd be like, forget this, I'm going to the Holiday Inn. Chris O'Dowd is an Irish actor who's in the film Bridesmaids in the IT crowd. At this point in my life, three times a day, people go up to me and go, oh, I saw you, and no, you didn't! <laughs> the only similarity is I am O'Doherty, and he's, oh, it's like an O apostrophe and a D and a vague Irishness. That does not make us the same person. I am not Daniel O'Donnell either. <laughs> Finally, my friends, actual grown-ups, Stop taking computer games so seriously. <laughs> I have a friend who plays Guitar Hero the game. And it's not the fact that he plays it and he is an adult. It's the fact that he sometimes answers the front door when I call over in just his underpants and a t-shirt with a tiny, stupid, plastic children's guitar around his neck. And it's the fact that he goes, do you want to come in? I'm just jamming. You're not jamming! <laughs> but Marley did jamming! It just makes me so sad, I think, looking at him. Just the idea of dedicating that much of your life to attaining this pointless expertise in what amounts to a stupid, plastic, children's toy musical instrument. <laughs> sort it out, world. If you don't, then you risk being part of my Beeps 2011. Uh, uh, most uh, unique comedy brains uh, on the circuit for my money. Please give off the wonderful Mr. Andrew Lawrence. Thank you very much. Everyone, welcome. How nice to be here. Uh, well done to you people for sitting down the front. That takes a certain sort of bravery, doesn't it? Like, um, you don't know what I'm going to say to you. I don't know what you're going to say to me. It's awkward. It's difficult talking to people. When I was growing up, my parents used to say, Andrew, don't talk to any creepy-looking men. The irony now, of course, is I'm a creepy-looking man. <laughs> so you're not allowed to talk to me. <laughs> well, was, uh, this afternoon, I saw a small boy bouncing a ball up and down in his front garden. He looked up at me, he smiled, he said, Hello! Part of me was touched, but there was another part of me thought, how impertinent for a small boy to address an adult in that way. I said, throw me the ball. He threw me the ball, I kicked it as hard as I could across the road into a skip. And he said, my ball, why did you do that? I said, because life is hard, my little friend. I'm <laughs> sort of number one. <laughs> and his mother came running out of the house screaming like, what the hell are you doing here? You're only supposed to see him on weekends. <laughs> It's nice, it's nice to be in Scotland. All the Scottish people give me a cheer. Yay! I like it. It's nice, especially compared to some of the other third world countries. I think it compares <laughs> very favourably. I, um, I got the train up. I love the trains. When I was a kid, I used to um, have model train sets. I used to pretend I was a train driver making those smug, sarcastic announcements those train drivers make, like, um, please move right down inside the carriage. Please move right down inside the carriage. Allow other people to invade your personal space. <laughs> Please do ram yourself up against all the windows and doors. Allow your physical boundaries to be encroached upon. <laughs> till you're inadvertently dry humping a stranger. <laughs> Please do eat some stinky, disgusting food with your mouth open. Drop half of it on the floor to sit there rotting for the rest of the week. Please do swing a large bulky bag over your shoulder, smack everyone in the face with it as you leave the train. Please do block the aisle with enormous push chairs full of screaming, ugly, dirty children who should have been abandoned at birth. Please do be entirely unable to operate our automated toilet door, have it swing back as a parade of school children walk past. To reveal you hideously mid crap with all your bits and pieces hanging out like a farmyard animal. Welcome to ScotRail, we'll uh. I've got a train up this year and um, uh, it's packed 
and the lady got on. I thought she was pregnant. There were no free seats. I got up, I said, would you like my seat? She said, I'm not pregnant, actually. That's awkward, isn't it? I said, what difference does that make? I know lots of people who aren't pregnant, they'll like having a nice sit down. Especially the fat ones. <laughs> yeah. It's easily done, though, isn't it? It's so easy to say the wrong thing. I, um, I was at a late night gig on Saturday doing one of these late night Edinburgh festival gigs. I was on first, and then I went and stood at the back of the room to watch the other comedians. At the end of the gig, I was walking back to the green room. A lady from the crowd grabbed me, asked me to get one of the comedians for her. So I went into the green room. I said to the comedian, there's a lady out there who wants to talk to you. He said, oh, yeah, scale of one to ten, how attractive is she? I said, I don't really want to put a number on it. That's a little bit crass, but if I had to, I'd probably say no more than a three. He said, oh, all right, then. He went out to talk to her. Turns out it's his wife. That's embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a, a privilege and a delight. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the stage the next act is the wonderful Mr. Ron Vaudry. Thank you, thank you very much. Good evening, how are you? Uh, this is pleasant. Can we get this light just a little brighter if it's at all possible, please? I could almost see my dead parents beckoning me in this <laughs> you like you're late for school. That's an angry light, that one. <laughs> All right, some of you weren't laughing at that. Let me explain stuff for you here briefly. Uh, my friends, laughter is a good thing, okay? That's my only message. It's my only intent. It's a very powerful thing, laughter. A very physical thing, laughter. Every time you laugh, your brain emits chemicals. Positive chemicals, dopamines, endorphins that stimulate your immune system and possibly can kill a cancer cell. Yeah. So my way of looking has got to be, if you'd rather have cancer than laugh at my silly jokes about my dead parents, what kind of miserable bastard are you? <laughs> I, I like living here amongst you people. I've been living here in uh, Britain for uh, a little over seven years now, which of course means I've experienced seven British summers, and Christ, they are special. <laughs> Should be very proud of these little Kodak moments you call summer over here. You guys are a much hardier lot than you let on. I have so much respect for you people. Ten and a half months in a row of gray and drizzle every goddamn day I get up and want to stick a gun in my mouth. How about it? There's not a drop of vitamin D on this entire island, is there? How did the Germans even find you freaks in the first place? That's what they are. They are some lucky guessing Nazis there. I like everything about you guys, quite frankly. I love your TV. Your TV is awesome here. It cracks me up every day. I TV news in the morning. They read you the newspapers, the lazy bastards. What the hell is that? <laughs> it's supposed to be TV. And why do you make your deaf people stay up so late just to watch TV? What's that all about? <laughs> kind of rude when you think about it, isn't it? <laughs> Anybody else miss the Richard and Judy show? Oh. Those were lovely afternoons pondering what kind of bizarre Dorian Gray deal with the devil did this bastard make, huh? <laughs> so I to show his lovely wife. Now he's working with his grandmother. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> you don't age at all, is she? Holy Christ, you got older during the advert. <laughs> There's gonna be a pile of dust in the chair as the credits roll by at the end. <laughs> well, he has gotta go now. <laughs> You guys have been awesome. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Mr. Ron Bobby. Uh, we're back to you, Sir Man. Uh, when I first came to Edinburgh, uh, his was one of the first shows I saw. It's still one of the best. Uh, it's an honour to introduce him. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Jim Owen. <laughs> that one. <laughs> this one's called, uh, this is this one. <laughs> no, 
I'm joking. That's that one again. <laughs> this is this one. This one's called, uh, that's not it, is it? <laughs> there is, that's not it. <laughs> is it? <laughs> that is it. <laughs> there are no songs. I just strum a bit and people feel like they've had a song. Songs about my kitchen. In my kitchen, there's a drawer at the top. It's got cutlery, knives, forks, spoons, the lot. The second drawer down's got a big knife and an egg whip. And things that should go in the first drawer. Just don't fit. And the third draw from the top, it's just full of shit. <laughs> There's elastic bands and cigarette papers that won't stick. Dried up glue, false teeth. Something stolen from a hotel Things that are broken that you know you'll never fix But you put them in the third drawer Cause you just ain't got the heart to throw them away It's the third drawer from the top So shit <laughs> Chopstick, an ashtray from Canada, paid bills and envelopes, things that you think will come in handy, but they just never do. It's the third drum from the top, it's full of shit. Next act, uh, an amazing comic, uh, easily one of the coolest as well. Please give everything you can. It's the wonderful Mr. Tom Stay. Yeah. Well, good evening. All right. Got it. Just, uh, I was just over in Afghanistan. Are any of my Afghani brothers here? No. Because they're not allowed to come over here. You got to join the army to go to Afghanistan. You can't take an easy jet flight over there. <laughs> I want to see Afghanistan on one of them holiday programs like a place in the sun. <laughs> I want to see, I want to see little Amanda sitting there going, hi, I'm Amanda and we're here in sunny war-torn Afghanistan with Bob and Margaret who are thinking about relocating. <laughs> And they have five pounds to spend <laughs> on a beautiful mud hut. <laughs> now, this next hut I'm going to show you, it's a little out of your budget. It's nine pounds, <laughs> but it does come with an opium field. <laughs> Is that something you'd be interested in?